Very good evening, Gordon Bennett TV. It's the evening show, 8.30 p.m. here in Poland. Six balloons still in flight. We've got Germany one, France two, and Swiss two. And currently the third, the second, and the first places, we've got France one on 480 kilometers. We've got Swiss one on 586. And Poland two out ahead on 802, just passed through 800 kilometers, Benoit. What a day, what a day we've had. Yes, it was a wonderful day because uh, they found some wind at last. The wind that we were all expecting uh, arrived and they got quick wind during the day and all of a sudden the 400 kilometers target from uh, set by uh, Austria 1, it's gone and we are uh, right in the race now. We do, we can see on the screen there in front of us Poland 2 passing through 800 kilometers away. And then you've got Swiss one, France one, Germany one, not very far away, France two, and Swiss two. Yeah. We had Swiss three land earlier over the border into Lithuania, and we caught up with the team on the ground. On. Balthazar and Walter, Swiss three back on the ground. Congratulations on a really exciting flight. Thank you. Just just almost 400 kilometers, 399 point something. We watched you passing through that Kaliningrad gate. Very exciting to watch. Tell me all about that. Yeah, to pass through the uh, Kaliningrad gate, this was very, really yeah. an exciting thing. You know, 400 kilometers for a Gordon Bennett race is not so much anyway, but uh, the race was very exciting and we find a very nice, very nice landing spot here <laughs> up and uh, we, were, we have been joined by so many people from around here, even uh, the president of the local balloon club and then another balloon pilot. i show you them over there. Hi guys, good to see you. Hi. <laughs> exactly. They have been on the landing spot and Regan, I'm sure there was no, no, not one of the Gordon Bennett teams <laughs> after where the retrieve crew, the best retrieve crew anyway in the world, have been there uh, 10 minutes after our landing. This that is, is absolutely true. This is I was so happy to see them walking through the forest. I mean, you can, I can tell you. This is Hi, good to see you. Good to see you all. <laughs> Ten minutes, that's incredible you know, that they got there so I quick. <laughs> Hello, my friend. And, okay. you, and you know, the best balloon team would be nothing without the retrieve crew. What yeah. would we ask to do out there in the forest here in Lithuania after landing with a balloon if they wouldn't be there? So, uh, but uh, you want to know something about our flight, Balthasar will tell you. <laughs> Balthasar. Okay, Regan. Uh, okay, let me uh, recapitulate. So last uh, night, you know, we realized that we cannot make it, that we are too much south. And uh, so we had two options, either to uh, speed, speed up and land during the day, or then to go slow and go down and just park somewhere and try to find a quiet spot. And we had a uh, an indication that we could get a a um, a south uh, westerly wind uh, sometime in the later in the night. So that's uh, why we tried then to climb up slowly uh, in the night and uh, see there we found it. Voidel was uh, sleeping and uh, he woke up and I told him, uh, Voidel, we're on the way to Lithuania. And I was very much surprised and very much happy. So then we made it up there through this corridor and but it wasn't wasn't so easy it was quite much uh, to do uh, to keep the balloon stable to keep him uh, keep the balloon there where we wanted where we want to have him but we uh, both together we managed it we managed it very well till uh, till the landing where we had quite some trouble with the survey yep i mean just about half half an hour before landing you know our plan on original plan was obviously was was uh, to continue in order to uh, to um, 
uh, to beat the leading, uh, what was it, Austria yeah. 2, yeah. right? Austria uh, 1. Or Austria 1, you know, that distance. So we made it, uh, and we had plenty of ballast, and everything was wonderful, but about 2,000 meters. And then uh, we finally got overrolled by one of the convective clouds there. Uh, and uh, flying with a gas balloon in a convective cloud um, is uh, something we're going to be talking off camera about it. Right. Uh, it's something uh, which, uh, yeah, is not uh, for the faint hearted, I can tell you. Oh, bad. So yeah. that costed us a little bit of gas, uh, to say the least, and a little bit of ballast, to say the least. And But we managed safely to get out of the cloud, and um, happily enough, so we ended up on uh, above the uh, uh, the Lithuanian National Forest, and by the way, Lithuania from the from is a such a beautiful, awesome, incredible country. I mean, it's like in 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 a, in a different world when you're overflying that. This is just awesome, and uh, isn't it? I mean, that's yes. And by the way, Lithuania is a very good beer. <laughs> yes. I was going to ask how the Lithuanian in beer is. It looks like a beautiful place. It looks like somewhere that we really need to visit. Yes, it is. It's, I mean, I can really recommend it. I, an awesomely friendly people. The, the landscape is just, I mean, I, I'm, I was stunned. I, I looked out of the basket and I said, this is just awesome. All these plains and the forests and the rivers and I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, I, it's certainly a place to go back. I mean, I mean, really, really worth a trip. And uh, and that huge, big national forest, which is there in the middle, was, uh, you know, was kind of uh, uh, where we ended up. We had to cross it. There, there are little villages or kind of settlements in the forest itself, but we had to battle with the thermals and thermal become, and they, you know, the, the convective clouds were really low down at about, uh, I would say about 1500 meters, the basis, and we didn't have much space between the forest and the, and, and the clouds. The clouds had a lot of draft, so we lost basically ballast there. And at the end, uh, we didn't have uh, much, uh, you know, choice, right? We had an empty, empty balloon there, or just a bag, you know, with a bit of hydrogen in it, and about uh, two bags left of, uh, of, uh, of sand and, uh, and water. And uh, that's it. And then we had to say, well, that's it. We go uh, and, uh, you know, and the best place was the forest. And you know, we were lucky by choosing this place because the few uh, Lithuanian Polonians came to help us and not even they helped us. They invited us for beer. beer. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, what, no, a, no, I mean, what a great story. The balloon really. is safe, so we went with, uh, quite, uh, with about uh, 10 or, uh, you know, That's 10, better, uh, you see, you know yeah. 11 or 12 uh, kilometers per hour and uh, and about three, three, four meters uh, vertical speed per second. So it was quite a a heavy landing, uh, right. to, say a, to, to, to say a friendly word, but it is it was a safe landing. And uh, we fortunately got it uh, down in a, in a part of the of the forest where it was young trees, so the the balloon looks um, looks um, undamaged and um, we are we are we are happy. And uh, the retrieve crew, I mean, they were there within six minutes. They they came walking up to us uh, through the forest. I mean, I was rarely ever so happy to see people marching up to me and uh, in a. Uh, somewhere uh, as at that very moment. I mean, that was uh, fantastic. And you again, yes. if you once have to do an interview to fill up your program, you know, if you don't know what uh, to what to do to fill up your program, just ask Paul Pazar. He tells you everything you want to know <laughs> about what, about anything. Oh. <laughs> Are you complaining? <laughs> Are you I'm complaining? not complaining. <laughs> No, I mean we had a we had a great flight, Regan. Really, to say that uh, we were ready for a third night. Frankly, yeah. we wanted to make it up uh, in in Lithuania, Lithuania. Our plan was actually to go more north, and um, but obviously we lost all the ballast in that last battle, and we hadn't any choice. So it was a very very memorable flight, and uh, and now we're going to be enjoying a few days in Lithuania, just uh, sort out the gear, and uh, we'll. See you soon again in Poland. Okay, oh, you see much. you soon. See you in soon. Poland. Great, great report. A great story.
classic um, content from you guys. I look forward to seeing you back here, but enjoy your next few days in Lithuania. Baltasar and Walter, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. All right. Take care. Bye. Great there, chatting with the boys. And that's a shot of them landing, Benoit, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, look very much uh, very remote area. Uh, it's always funny to see it, uh, to see a picture because uh, when we see it, when we watch it on the map, it doesn't look as remote, and the the trees don't didn't seem to be any trees. I thought yeah. they, they they found the clearance. But who took that picture from the high? And that's um, the Belarus border just in the distance, yes. I think, there. Yeah. The Belarus border, and they were that, uh, they got uh, about a four miles wide uh, area where they were not allowed to land. So, in the end, it was, uh, we were watching them, uh, you know, overing, uh, trying to find somewhere to land because uh, uh, it's uh, forest everywhere. But uh, I think, I believe they're. Uh, chess crew was there about five minutes ago yeah we're five gonna check in with the so. producer mark he's got some info for us yeah actually i just got a question from Grosha asking what's the procedure if a land if a team lands so in such a remote area and um how quickly can the chase crew get to them good question oh that's a good question um well that crew were there about 10 minutes later it looks remote but there were plenty of uh you see of road and uh, all this um nowadays in europe it's uh, not that bad but uh, i always remember that the 90 1907 the second golden bennett i think uh, an american team won the race and the lady did somewhere very remote in canada i took them eight days to come back to civilization wow eight days to come back to civilization eight days and yes and the stuff they were carrying they were carrying a gun and they had to fight against wolves and uh, things were attacking them. We were talking in the afternoon show with Mark about in those early Gordon Bennett's, no trackers, no GPS, no radar, you're just up into the skies and off you go. Yes, that must have been wonderful, but we, um, we got a guy here, uh, the jury president, who is still who says that uh, when he started uh, flying Gordon Bennett in the 1980s, we didn't have all this uh, equipment, so it was adventure. It was a great adventure. Thomas Fink, he holds the record for the highest gas balloon flight, doesn't he? I think. Yes. He was Thomas us. Fink, I think. I think he does. See, wait, hey, I'll do the jokes, you do the judging. Right, then, let's move on to... We, now, because we talked about in the past, they didn't have any kind of technology on board, but now with all the cameras, we can even watch them having dinner. Let's go to Swiss 2 and see what's going on there. Welcome back in the basket of Swiss 2 and here Kurt is having his dinner. Hi friends, matched potatoes today and uh, yeah we quite relaxed after a day above the clouds and looking the others going north of uh, Berlin but we decided to go south of Berlin and so we have a little more time not so a big distance to do i yeah, will see where the others go they have to um, move now to the right we can go straight ahead so at the end maybe we are all at the same position will be interesting stay tuned we look forward to show you our next steps we go and here just a short view on our Fly tech, it shows 45 hours in the, up in the air with, uh, oops, no speed. Okay, well, it lost probably the speed. We have around 44 kilometers per hour in the moment and above 1,000 meter above sea level. Bye bye. You can keep up with all the action. You can follow the tracking all through the night as we go into this third night live. Got Gordon Bennett. Dot arrow. Producer Mark, a few questions from social media. Don't forget, if you're watching, you can type a comment and we'll get back to you. Yeah, we do. We do have, uh, of course, people cheering. We have a lot for Poland too. Slavonir, Robert, um, Gracia. We have some cheering for Switzerland 1. Um, down here, actually, we have a top fan, Regan Tetlow, just said hello. That's me. And uh, 
more cheering and there's some question on like why why we're not having Poland 2 on, on the stream right now. We've got our fantastic researcher Christian who spends over 10 hours a day contacting all the teams. He's just busy all day sending out WhatsApps and phone calls, trying to get the content and trying to get the connection. Sometimes it just depends where they are, Mark, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's only like um, if they fly high, they have no data connection. Um, sometimes they busy with other stuff. Um, uh, they also need to conserve their energy inside the balloons. Um, yeah, but um, we're trying to connect all of them and uh, bring whatever we have. And Benoit, how do you feel uh, being the uh, the meet director with how we've moved it forward with social media and the content that we bring? It's it's good for people to see what's happening, eh? Well, it's wonderful. I think uh, Gordon Bennett needs uh, as much publicity and media coverage as we can because I've always loved the race, but um, it needs to be known to the world. So when people know about the race, when they start, you know, you've got friends and they come for the first time to the Gordon Bennett and they follow the track and it's so exciting and they, they love it and they come back every year. So we need to carry on and I think you're doing a great job. And just to let people know what's happening with Benoit and the team, they are actually in the room next door. That's 24 hour coverage. There's always somebody there. You're, you, you get the calls, you get any emergencies which are dealt with when they land. Just tell me the kind of things that you go through on a daily basis. Um, Yes, it's uh, sometimes the, the day is uh, it's long, the nights are, are long, but uh, of course uh, we've got uh, emergencies. Today we've watched uh, Swiss free landing and uh, we were very concerned about them getting near that uh, forbidden zone. And um, we call in advance uh, ATC to another country, so about a couple of hours before they cross the border. And we called Litania uh, Air, F Air uh, Authority yes. and to tell them that the uh, balloon was coming and then we kept in contact with them. Uh, pilots, um, some pilots are, are really uh, asking us, um, in inquiring about uh, where they're going, if they've got ETC clearance and all this. Um, this afternoon we had a uh, we had an in incident with uh, Poland 2 that had to land due to bad weather. They had uh, Poland they 1. Was it Poland 1? Yeah. Sorry, yes, yes. I will <laughs> get mixed them. I will say, um, Matthews, uh, they were flying uh, near Berlin Airport and uh, they were flying about uh, 3,000 meters, um, 12,000 feet, and they were uh, in. Uh, well, they got the uh, rain that changed to snow, and they asked clearance for to go down to for, to go to uh, flight level 70. They went down, but the balloon uh, was getting very heavy, and uh, they decided to land. So they did an emergency landing not far from uh, Berlin Airport. Uh, it wasn't due to Berlin uh, Airport Authority, but it was them. They decided to land in bad weather, very bad condition, but they are safe and we are pleased for them. Good. Let's check in with France 2 in the air with Eric and Benoit. Good evening everyone from Direct Live in uh, uh, France 2 team. We went 4,000 meters down to 800 meters just in front of the Berlin airport, which is the way we are, we are going. Uh, here it's in the middle of nowhere. There is the Polish forest. Uh, yesterday and today were quite busy uh, because we had to uh, avoid the thermals and then correct the trajectories and again this evening with the Berlin airport. So a lot of stuff and uh, uh, quite difficult uh, Gordon Bennett race but that's interesting. I've seen that there are about six more pilots uh, flying so it would be great for the next night and maybe the next two more nights. We will see. <laughs> So many people were predicting it was going to be a short race, Benoit. They were saying it might just be one night. We're going into our third night. We've got six six teams still flying. Let's have yes. a look at what's going on. Um, we've got, uh, so we've got those six teams. And uh, we had that patch of bad weather that went through, that went through quickly. Uh, we had thunderstorms all over Europe yesterday. Yeah. But they managed 
to go around it. They did not have to go as far north as we thought they were. And today we see at the moment what's going on and they are in the in the airflow. The first balloon, uh, our friend, Poland 2, they are very much ahead of everybody. And there uh, may be the wind, you can see the change of color, means the wind are going to go weaker. And uh, they will, I might, to my mind, they will. They might go to Switzerland. It's, it's like they're almost in a center there. There's winds going to the west and winds going to the east, right that, around that's them. Right. Yeah. And the right. And in the middle, there's no wind. Right. right, yeah. So these guys, which are uh, going a bit further later, maybe they are going, they're working on, or they must be working on to get that rather than going that way so they can go to France and maybe cross France. Maybe we've got the, an idea of the trajectories they would go. Well, <coughs> there you are. That's uh, our Polish friend. That's the situation. Uh, that's the trajectories for uh, this time now. And uh, where he is, depending on the altitude, from 540 meters to 2,400, 2,400 meters, uh, he might. Uh, but if we, we see that if he goes low, you know, that's for a 24 hours trajectory. So maybe by tomorrow night, he will be having uh, oysters at Fellowship. Sounds like a good, uh, a good deal to me, Mark. On the uh, social media, any more questions coming through? Yeah, we do have um, some more question here. Um, also, does the land crew or basically chase crew follow the balloons at all time on the land? Do they always chase or do they first wait or how does that work? Uh, well, it depends on the teams. You've got uh, some teams that want to chase the, as soon as the balloon uh, launch. Uh, they follow them because they like to be uh, behind uh, the balloon, uh, underneath the balloon, if in case there's an emergency. Uh, most chase crew, and that's what I always recommend to my chase, is to have a good night's sleep before they hit the road, because then on, sometimes they never stop until they are underneath on the chase, and they retrieve us. Yeah. And uh, there's another one question. Is Poland 2 flying into this night? Is it flying another night? It looks like it uh, because it's uh, dark now, and I think uh, the six balloons that are still in the air will fly through the night. There we go, six teams into the night. We've got Germany one, France two, Swiss two. We've got France one, Swiss one, and Poland two into the third night of action. Anything else from the social media wall, Mark? Um, nothing that just picks out for me right now. We were back with you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, with all the updates from the overnight action in the 64th Coupe Aeronautic. Gordon Bennett from Benoit. And from me, good night. A tutelier.